Hello and welcome to another video from the Micro Rooster. Today's topic is real-time consolidation and grouping. We're familiar or some of us are familiar with consolidation custom grouping done in the developer end. We're also uh, we have a video about how to create derived elements in the developer but today I want to focus on real-time custom group and consolidation at runtime. We have a report here, simple report with manager employee and length of employment from the Microsoft tutorial. I use those elements to create them. And then we have the ability to, after we run the report, we can do some consolidations or grouping or filtering on the items we see. So let's take a few items, click while holding the control button. And uh, we're just going to create a grouping based on this. Our grouping, um, give it any name we want. Just gonna call it a random list for our purposes today. All right, so now we see our random list created. We can go and add totals and subtotals to our list. Just gonna do grand totals for two items and then put that at the top so we can see the values without scrolling. All right, so notice these numbers. We have 152 and 3,086 for the total. We added the random. This is so far correct because what we did, we grouped everything into one list. But I'm going to right click and go to derived elements so I can see the properties of my random list. And notice there's an option to include the individual elements. If you do that, which is an ability to display the grouping and the individual items, you have to be careful about one thing. You might end up with the uh, with incorrect subtotals. Notice that it went from 38 to 47. You double count it. So if you decide to choose the individual and the grouping, you need to make sure that you modify the behavior of your element. So in this case, if I want to include them, I have to modify the subtotal behavior to either not include the, uh, to not include the, uh, uh, new group in the calculation or to not include the individual elements in the calculations that both options exist. Let me show you the second option here Go to properties, same drop down. Instead of not including the elements, we could not include the grouping and just include the elements by the second option. Either way, it's going to give us the same results. Um, back to our correct number, the 3,800. Okay. Now, if you want to use the elements when calculating subtotals, the remember we're going to produce the wrong results, so you have to make sure to modify and either go back to your default or you can just all together hide the uh, the grouping. You might if you hide the grouping, then you're going to get the correct results, even if you're including the individual, because now the grouping is not incorporated subtotal. Why would you do that and not just delete the grouping? Because you might want to add it later on. So that's a good way to just remove it from the template for now, just by keeping the individual items and using them in the calculation. Let's go back to our default, show a couple more settings. Something handy here is you can color your grouping separately, either header or value, depending on what you prefer. This is just going to color the column that you're using the drive element and the value associated with it. All right, so see one more thing. There's a couple more options with these uh, real-time consolidations and grouping. One of them is the filter. The difference between the filter and the what we showed earlier is it allows you to do some qualification. And let's just uh, look at this list and employees. So I'm doing it on the second column. And let's just choose those that have a last name that start with S. Um, begins with S. Okay, let's see what happens. So there were two items. They got bundled up together. And that's reflected in the subtotal as well. Okay, the length. And um, let's just go ahead and create another one. This time let's create a calculation. Calculation is a little bit... Uh, handy when you need to do some math on the row level, which is not available at the column level. So let's choose these two items, apply an average on them and see what happens. Now our new calculation is grouping those two items and showing the average. Now remember, these are inherit all the properties just as 
what we did with the random list. You can do separate, you can do individual, and manipulate the behavior of the subtotaling to get it the way you want it to be reflected. Obviously, once you agree or you confirm that your results are correct, you might want to do some uh, renaming or whatever just to make sure that you're expressing. And remember, these calculations can be at multiple levels as well. You can have them at the derived and the element. You can also save your derived elements or your groupings, and you can use other ones. You could also sort the order. This could impact, this could have an impact on how things are displayed. And here, as I showed you the calculation, you could select from elements or you can select from derived elements. So you can start building compound. You can also add values. Just remember that when you add values, it can screw your results. So here I added 110 and I just bumped my average. All right, thank you very much.